Good evening, young people. I'm here today to talk about making graphs, especially along the same lines that we were talking about today in our activity. That is choosing the graph, correct graph type and what organizational features do I need to make a really great graph in chemistry class or any graph for that matter. Okay, so what data goes with what graph? That's where we're going to start first. So we know that there are three major types of graphs. There's pie graphs, and pie graphs are really special because pie graphs have both words, textual information, and numbers in the data set. So in the data set, you'll see a series of words that describe an activity or a substance or a music or whatever it is. Um, and then you'll have numbers in the data set. But there's something special about these numbers. The numbers are always percents that add up to 100. Not just random percents that add up to anything, but percents that add up to 100. That's really important. So that's how you know it's pie graph information. Now, bar graph has similar information. You have both words and text again. You have numbers as well. And when I say words and text, you've got to be really careful because dates are text. Um, months of the year are text. So you need to be really careful when you're thinking about how you're doing these kinds of graphs. But the difference between a pie and a bar graph is the numbers don't add up to 100%. Um, they might be more than 100%, or they could be something that you've measured or counted. Um, all of those things would be appropriate. But it's never going to be percentages that add up to 100. If you have 100%, you're always going to go pie graph. Okay? The position of the words on the axis doesn't make a difference. So we usually put the words on the x-axis because they're the independent variable, the thing that we're changing. And so usually it doesn't matter where we put that. If we put fish first or dog first in the number of people that have those pets, it doesn't change what the information tells us. So the interpretation of the viewer doesn't matter um, in the position of where the words or text go on the x-axis. However, the y-axis does matter. So, you know, you have to be aware of that. Then finally, the one that we like the least, that we like doing the least, is a line graph. Line graphs are always going to have numbers, and those numbers are going to have measure, been measured, and they're going to have units with them. Um, we can't measure without a unit, so we are always going to have uh, numbers with units, okay? And it's going to have an XY coordinate, so when we think about it mathematically, we're going to have an X position and a Y position that we're going to be able to plot on a coordinate plane. The difference is, in chemistry, in science, we only use the first quadrant. We don't use the others. We only use positive quadrant. So we're only going to be working with the single first quadrant where X is positive and Y is positive. We very rarely do anything but. So we have to remember that. And the data is trying to show how these two variables that we have chosen, one is the independent variable, one is the dependent variable, are changing with respect to each other over time. We might see a similar thing in a bar graph, but a line graph is really trying to show how these two numbered pieces of data are changing over time. So it's a very distinct difference between these three types of graphs. Um, in chemistry class, we do line graphing much, much more than we do either of the other two. That doesn't mean that the other two are not appropriate and they're not there and they're not available or they're not available to use. But we use these two, these three types of graphs the most. Line graphs in chemistry are our bread and butter. We will be making more line graphs in this classroom than we will be making anything else. But you have to be able to determine what data goes with what kind of graph. So that's going to be a really important feature in what you're trying to learn from this activity that we did today. So what does every good graph need? There are five basic things, five basic organizational features that every good graph needs. The first one is a title. The second one is an axis label with units. You must have units. If you've measured a number, it must have a unit. If you count it, it doesn't have a unit. Um, but if you've measured it, it has to have a unit. You have to have appropriate scales. This seems to be the one that everybody has the biggest problem with because we haven't been taught how to scale our axes. And so we're going to be working through that problem a little bit. Then again, we need plots of the data points. So if it's a line graph, we're plotting an x, y point. If it's a bar graph, we're plotting the height of the bar. If it's a pie graph, we're getting the angle of the pie piece. 
How much of the pie piece do we have there? So all of those are important to plotting the points, okay? And then finally, we've either drawn pies so we can recognize the difference between them, or we've drawn bars to have differences there, or we've drawn a line of best fit for a line graph. And a line of best fit is usually what we always want to try to get to. We want to get to a line of best fit. Most of the time in year one, that is going to be a straight line, but sometimes in year two, it could be something different than a straight line. So we're going to be talking about that and interpreting and analyzing graphs a little bit later. So let's see what all of these things look like on the graph types that you had to do. So title, what does that look like? Title should reveal the IV and DV, for example, volume versus mass. Volume is the DV, and on the y-axis and mass is the IV on the x-axis. So we can see here in our bar graph, students' favorite school activities. We can see here is the title, and we can see the IV and the DV. The activity is the IV, students is the DV, the number of students. So we can see that clearly expressed there. So how about the next kind of graph that we saw today? Musical style preference, okay, so we see that we have our bars and the musical style preference, so we know the types of music that we need. We see those over here and we see the preference of those, so we can clearly see that that goes with that. Volume versus pressure, so we see that the volume here is on the y-axis, it's the DV, and the pressure is the IV, and so when we write volume versus pressure, it's always DV versus IV. That's always the way that we do that in um, graphing in science. We always do the DV versus the IV if we're going to have a title like that. So those are titles. How about axes labels? Well, labels should be given um, to each axis that includes a unit. So if you've got a unit, you've got to include a unit. Counter numbers do not always need units, so when things are counted, we don't always need units. So for the first example, number of students was a counted number. We don't need a unit here because number of students tells us what it means. But if we measured centimeters, we should have the unit CM behind all of that. Um, we should have distance or length and CM behind it. So there is the appropriate label for this one. So there's the appropriate label for the X, activity. So neither one of them have units, and that's okay for this one. Okay, in a pie graph, um, you always have to have labels. So if you look, I have a key over here, pie graph. This is the easiest thing to do to make a key for the colors of the pie wedges. And then I also like to include the percentages so people don't even have to guess. It's really obvious what the percentages are. So you can see very clearly um, notice that there are no units here again. Again, these were not numbers that were necessarily um, measured. They were counted. So we see there we are, and there are the, I'm sorry, there are the axes labels for that. Okay, for a, uh, um, I'm sorry, for a line graph, it's even more simple. There is the X, or the Y axis, yes, I'm sorry, the X axis label, pressure in millimeters of mercury. And there is the y-axis label. And notice both of them were measured quantities, so they both have units. That is going to distinguish a line graph from all the other kind of graphs. If you have two things that you've measured, you better be making a line graph. No other graph will do. Okay? Appropriate scale. Um, a scale is really hard. Scale does not mean that the x and the y-axis have to match. What it actually means is that the x-axis has to match the x information, and the y-axis needs to go with the y-axis information. They do not necessarily need to be exactly the same. Um, so let's look at what we're talking about. You can clearly see here that we don't have numbers on the x-axis, so they're not going to be the same at all. But the y-axis definitely has a scale, and notice each space represents the exact same amount, and that's what we mean by scale. Every line that you go up has to represent exactly the same amount. You can't have one line representing 10 and then the next line representing 50. That's never going to work. So the scale is really important, and you also want to make sure that you're seeing a trend. This is a picture of our data, and to get a true picture, we have to have a scale that's appropriate. So. Pie graphs are a little different because the scaling on a pie graph is going to be the uh, size of the wedge. How big do you make that wedge? Well, that is based upon the, um, the percentages that you have. So the wedge, the angle of the wedge, is where we're, going to, where we're going to be making that appropriate, scale appropriate. 
Now, you will notice on this one, these two things do not have the same scale. The x and the y-axis do not have the same scale. One goes by tens because that was appropriate. One goes by 20 because that was appropriate. They do not have to match. As a matter of fact, they don't, they don't need to match. You don't have to make a match. If they do, perfect, it doesn't matter. But you will notice that each space on the y-axis represents 20 centimeters cubed. Each space on the x-axis represents 10 millimeters of mercury. It's the same for every single line, and that's the truth import true importance. Um, so when we practice this, um, we'll be looking at how you get that going. And finally, we're going to plot the data. Plotting the data means you get the height of the bar. So we plotted the data by making the height of the bar here. Okay, plotting the data for a pie graph is simply making sure you draw the correct size pie. So it's not good enough just to get the initial angle. You have to make the pie all the way out to the edge of the circle. And then finally, for the um, line graph, you have to plot an XY point. So where these little dots are, these represent XY points that were plotted by the computer as we had that do it. So plotting the points are really important. Okay, finally, drawing the bars, making sure that you have finished what you started. So we can see we drew a bar here that represented the appropriate height for visits with friends. For uh, pies, you simply need to make sure things are colored in and distinguished. So maybe if you don't have colored pencils, you could do different, um, um, different shading or different um, symbols on the inside of the pies. I chose color because it's very easy to do on the computer. That's done most often for pie graphs. So making sure that we can distinguish one piece from the other, especially if they turn out to be the same in some respects. Okay, so we used colors there. And line of best fit, we're going to draw a line that represents the data. The data, it could be curved, it could be straight, it could be a lot of things. So if I look at my data, I look at the points that I plotted, the dark blue, those are not straight line pieces. They have a curve to them. And so I'm going to draw a line of best fit that meets that curve. Now the computer did this line of best fit. That's the line of best fit that the computer did. And sometimes that gets a little crazy. But this is exactly what we need to do. Whether it's a straight line or a curved line, we need to draw a line of best fit, not just connecting the dots line. That's really important. So these are some features that you need to make sure that you have in every great graph. So I hope that you um, got a lot out of this and tomorrow you're ready to come to class and actually apply this to some problems that you're going to do.